Well, hi again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of MarquetteHoops.com, the Marquette basketball show with the great John Dodds. I'm Tom Pippins. Our producer is Jason Ruck. We're delighted to be with you once again. And all I can say is if I had the ratings of Nevada Smith, the director of program development for Marquette University basketball, I might still be doing local television on a nightly basis. Amazing and a plethora of knowledge talking about the upcoming recruiting class, John, and so many positive vibes from Nevada. Well, it's uh, May is sweeps month, yeah. and you gotta go big or go home. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we received more feedback, positive feedback, uh, and had the biggest ratings last uh, last week for uh, when Coach Smith came on. So definitely thank you for taking time out, Coach Smith. Last week we talked about the new players. We asked him about the new players, uh, Ben Gold, the Steve Novak, uh, kind of clone from uh, Australia, Sean Jones, the point guard, the two guard, um, Chase Ross. We have uh, Zach uh, Reitzel, the transfer from Loyola, the About South. Six, seven, yeah. Six, seven, and then uh, Kean Tirjere, who sat out last year. Those are the, the five new players who are coming in. We also asked him last week about the current players, if you could comment about the current players and also give us an indication of what they're doing in their individual skill sessions, what they're doing over the over the summer to improve. So this will be a power pack segment too. Absolutely, Nevada Smith, a great guy and so knowledgeable, the Director of Program Development for Shaka Smart. And he is brought to you by Moonlight Graham, our proud sponsor, Moonlight Graham, Modern Dental Benefits, Nevada. If I mention a player's name, if you could just make a quick comment about what you saw last year and what you think he's going to be working on in the summer. Number one would be Cam Jones. I think being more aggressive, I think you saw uh, glimpses of what he can be. Um, he's an elite scorer, uh, so I think getting him in positions where he can do that on a more consistent basis and uh, you know, just being aggressive with his ability to do the things that he can do, which is in the top 1% of all basketball players and put the ball in the basket. So. He's done a great job. He's gotten a lot bigger, too. Uh, I think working with Todd Smith, he looked like he was 10, 15 pounds heavier by the end of the year. He had some muscle compared to when I originally saw him in the summer. All of the guys have done a great job. Todd's uh, really pushing them right now, and uh, you know they're buying into it, and they love it, and uh, they're all doing a great job with their bodies. The next player is uh, Amarian Ellis. He seems to be the one I went to a practice and I saw 10 great things that I re that were memorable he was involved in six of them and so it seems like he's got the highest ceiling but maybe the lowest floor right now could you talk about him but he's a really an interesting uh, prospect yeah I think the you kind of said the sky's the limit for e. Um, he he's working he's he's trying to get his body um, a little more stable I mean, he's a long athletic Six five point guard um, who can play off the ball, can guard. I think he could be an elite defender. Um, and he's really working on his shooting, uh, working on his ball handling ability, and you know he's doing such a great job with his body. Um, you know we expect big things from him. Next player is Stevie Mitchell. You had touched on him a little bit. Uh, he reminded me. I've covered the Packers also for forty over forty years, and he reminded me on defense of a Charles Woodson, where he just kind of comes up and gets in the grill and starts attacking. And it seems like the by the end of the year, the light started flickering, the confidence started growing for him, and he went through some freshman doldrums where I think he had one game where he had two turnovers in about a minute, but by the end of the year, you really had a solid guy. Yeah, I mean, I think he, you know, he hangs his hat on the defensive end. He's physically strong enough to guard any position. He, he wants to pick up full court. He wants to be a pest. He wants to get into the other team's best player. Um, he does a great job of disrupting uh, the other team. And, and offensively, he's worked. Uh, like I said, I think he's improved his shooting, his offensive ability more than anyone else we had since the first day he got here. Um, you know, he's playing confident right now. Uh, he's playing like someone that expects to be a major piece. And uh, he's doing a great job. Omax Prosper, I know Jay Wright was saying after the the, uh, the second uh, Villanova game at the Forum that he creates more matchup problems than just about anyone in the Big East in terms of he gives you that front player on the press, 
He can press you at half court. He can play small forward. He can shoot it from the outside. He can go down the hole. Talk, talk about him last year and then what he's going to be working on. He was great last year. He, you know, he started a majority of the games. He was one of our best, if not our best defensive player on the ball. Um, he just like you said, he's long, he's athletic. He can do a lot of different things. Um, offensively, he, you know, he, he showed in the North Carolina game, uh, you know, when he's making shots and get to the basket and you know, doing things um, to affect winning. Uh, he's a huge piece to what we're doing. Uh, I, I think uh, shooting it more consistently is what he's really working on right now, and the ability to to get plays at the rim, whether it be offensive rebounds, you know, finishing off a cut. Uh, finishing off an attack, a, a closeout attack. Um, you know, I think he's just trying to really hone in on those type of areas to to improve his offensive game. You weren't here last year or the year before, but Justin Lewis and uh, Oso Iguodaro both had leg injuries at the end of their freshman years. And uh, it, was, it was amazing for Marquette fans. Those are the two guys that I know that uh, Justin Lewis was – voted the most improved player in the Big East. But the improvement that Oso made during the year was uh, was amazing. And from early, even in October, uh, Shaka Smart was mentioning at that clinic that he's really impressed with him. He can do a lot of passing. He does gives, him, gives you a lot of flexibility, Oso does. Yeah, he he's not a traditional five. Um, he can really handle the ball. He's a great passer. Uh, he's athletic. He can get by people. Um, I think he's working on his overall package um, right now just to be a little more diverse on both ends of the court. I think defensively he got a lot stronger. He's put on a lot of weight since the season's ended. Um, so be able to, to muscle up and guard some of the bigger guys in our league, but also be able to take them on the perimeter on offense and make them have to guard um, is one of the things he does probably better than anyone in our league. Tyler Kolick, uh Marquette has had a tradition of great point guards, and uh, I think the uh, watching him play against West Virginia, that was the game he had 18 points, eight assists, and, and uh, six rebounds, and he looked like a Travis Diener or uh, Jimmy Boylan from the championship team back in 77. And uh, if you can talk about uh, him, I think he led the uh, Big East in uh, assists too. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, we didn't realize how good of a passer he was until he got here. Um, and he he can really pass the basketball. He's probably the best pick and roll passer in the country. Um, teams had to change how they were guarding us uh, midway through the year. He was just killing teams. Uh, I think the biggest thing with him is um, he's a great shooter. He's been a great shooter his whole life, and he didn't have a great year shooting the ball. Uh, so I think that is the biggest thing with him is getting him to the point where he's comfortable, confident, and uh, making shots like he was when he wasn't the point guard. Uh, George Mason, he played off the ball and scored a ton of points, um, was freshman of the year in the A-10. Uh, so I think getting back to being a point guard who can also score uh, and shoot the ball at a really high level is, is where he's at right now. So someone like that, does he shoot 150 shots a day or during the summer or 50 or it's always – Oh, he does a lot. He yeah, does a lot more he, than that. I don't know if we've, wow. we've had a guy that works this hard. Um, he he's never stopped working. He, he shoots probably too much. Um, but he, he, you say 150, I'm probably 500 a day, 1,000 a day. I'd say in between that. Okay. Um, he's in here multiple times. So he, uh, he works hard. Uh, you're never going to have to worry about that. You, you, uh, Interesting, you recruited a local Milwaukee uh, Brookfield uh, player when you were at Texas, uh, David Joplin. And it just so happened that uh, he kind of as a, like a boomerang came back and uh, followed uh, you to uh, Marquette, David Joplin from uh, uh, Brookfield Central. And when I watch him play, it, it looked like he reminds me a little bit of an old Milwaukee buck, Ricky Pierce, in that he can flat out shoot and kind of the best backhanded compliment I heard all year was from about Joplin was from uh, Daryl Marcel. And I asked him to tell me about David Joplin. And he said, no one takes more bad shots in practice on the team than uh, David Joplin does maybe more than all, everybody else combined, but he makes them all. 
that tells me he's really going to be good. So that was the, that was the best compliment I heard this year. Can you talk about him? Yeah, that probably says it all. He's a scorer. Um, he can make any shot at any point, regardless of defense, uh, which is a skill. Um, he's the best bad shot maker uh, we have, probably maybe in the Big East. Um, you know, I think consistently understanding uh, where his shots will come from, uh, being able to make the easy ones. Um, you know, this year he had some big moments. He had some great games, uh, but it was sparing. Uh, he wasn't always in the rotation. Um, so I think just him getting comfortable and him being ready to play, um, and he's going to uh, he's gonna do some great things on offense and being able to, to guard uh, the other team's you know, guys in the middle and being able to play hard enough with enough energy for the time he's in there to really disrupt them. Um, he's doing a great job with his body right now to, to prepare himself for that. There's a, the final player is uh, one who redshirted last year, Kian Itirjere. He won the uh, slam dunk contest at Madness. And there's just little clues that we hear because we're obviously not uh, at practice. But I interviewed Oso and I said, what's impressed you most about the team? And he said, we have this uh, freshman, Kian Itirjere, who all he does is he walks in his warm up is he touches his toes once and he's ready to do 360 jams. He says he's an incredible athlete. And he said, just wait when this guy puts it together. And I thought that was, that was pretty exciting coming from a teammate. Yeah, he's a um, all world athlete. Uh, he's one of the best athletes in the country. Um, just vertically, uh, his speed separates himself from other people. He, right now, he's just got to get his body able to play hard for longer. Uh, you know, not playing in games this year. He just has to get his conditioning to a level that um, he can sustain um, playing at 100% for a longer period of time. But he's an incredible athlete. Uh, the things he can do, you can't teach. He can just get the spots in the air that no one else can really get to. Um, and he, his, his energy level uh, when he's engaged and locked in, um, he makes a bunch of wild plays. Wild good and uh, wild, like, confusing. So, um but he's, he has a chance to be a really good player. Coach, you know sportscasters, exports, we all lie. I have one more question for you, but we don't want to let you get away right. without talking about your boys' basketball day camp. Yeah, uh, we have three camps uh, this summer and then a team camp. Um, you know, we have some great coaches and players that, uh, that work. You get to be around our guys a little bit. You get to be around some ex-Marquette players, um, and you get a lot of – fun and skill development. So uh, I recommend anyone that's out there that wants their uh, kids to, to have a great time this summer to, to come to a week of Marquette camp, come to all three if you want, and, uh, and really get better at basketball and have some fun. Should they call the office or what, what should they? Yeah, if you go to our website, our, okay. all of our camp information is on there. Uh, you can reach out, request more information, fill out a form. Uh, anything you would need right, is right on the website. Uh, at Marquette.edu. He is the Director of Program Development for Marquette University Basketball. Nevada Smith is his name. And, and Coach, it has been such a treat for us. Thank you for being again so gracious with your time and for all of this insight. You would be a welcome guest here any time of the future. <laughs> I appreciate it. Anytime you guys need anything, let me know. Uh, always here to promote the, the players and the program and, and anything we can do to help you guys. You guys do so much for us. Uh, just let us know. The Director of Program Development for Marquette University Basketball, Nevada Smith. Man, absolutely a privilege to get him on. I'm thankful you were able to arrange that with uh, the basketball chief over there at Marquette, Scott Kuykendall, who does such a terrific job. Let's talk a little bit about John Kerry. You know him well. Everyone has heard about him, it would seem, from the MAC Fund. But back in the day, he was a manager for Marquette, his alma mater, for Al McGuire. Sure, everybody knows John from the uh, MAC Fund. He was the executive director for uh, probably 30 years. But uh, from 1969 to 1973, he was Al McGuire's basketball manager. And uh, that was the golden era of Marquette basketball because in that those four years, Marquette lost 10 times total. They had probably the, the greatest players, the greatest teams. 
and probably the most crazy stories that you can ever uh, <laughs> you can ever imagine or remember. John Kerry certainly entertained us. Here he is now, brought to you by Moonlight Graham, proud sponsor of the program, Moonlight Graham Modern Dental Benefits. I interviewed Hank one time, and I said, when was the first time you met Al? And he said, I was coaching Christian Brothers down in Memphis, and, Bel and uh, Al was at Belmont, Belmont Abbey, Abbey, and yeah. they came up and played, and I came in and gave uh, Al his $5,000 guarantee, and it must have resonated with Al that I was a guy to be trusted, because he was an assistant coach with Eddie Hickey, and Al gets hired, and Hank has all these little kids, and he mm -hmm. wants to stay on, and, and Al goes, oh yeah, Hank, I want you to stay on. Together we'll, we'll be dynamite, we'll, we'll, we'll do great things. So then Al gives him $20,000 in cash. <laughs> for and the tells house. Him, for the house, he goes, <laughs> you and Ginny go out, could you buy us a house somewhere? And he left, and I'm, with, I'm here, <laughs> John, I had $20,000. <laughs> I knew this guy was something special. <laughs> when he was paying for his house in cash. And I said, he trusted you? He said, he trusted me because he remembered I gave him that yeah. guarantee back at Christian Brothers. So that was, a, that was a great relationship. And I think, Al, I've always maintained, Al knew his X's and O's, right. but he always felt that Hank should get as much mm -hmm. props, as many props as he could. So he kind of let that go. And then after a while, he trusted Hank where he would drive his motorcycle, he'd ride his motorcycle around and let Hank and Rick kind of take it over. Yeah, well, that's that's very true. That that uh, that house was one seven eight two zero Continental Drive in Brookfield. Ironically, Bill Cords had a house, it was a former AD at Marquette, down the road. At the party after the thing after reception after Coach died, it was at Westmore, and everybody got up to talk. And Billy Packer got up and he said he said Hank used to bury Al used to bury money in tin cans in the backyard I bet whoever bought that house if they dig it up they'll find them you know it was one of those kinds of things but but he did he respected Hank and in in um, it, it was very few people could I think have had that relationship but the two of them did because there, there was a mutual respect and uh, it was just nice and, and the other thing is you can't talk about Al McGuire and not talk about his mom, his uh, his wife. Mm. I mean, Pat was <laughs> classic. Talk, huh? <laughs> talk about a saint. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. my God. And and she and Allie were very close, and and they had great kids. I mean, Nora and Robbie, Nora and Robbie were Noreen and Robbie were just uh, wonderful. And uh, Al, when he left, you know, he obviously went to NBC, and um, it was 1980, and I got a message, at, I worked at Market High, and I got a message to call him. And the irony was, I was gonna ask him, um, you know, a favor. And so I, I called him, and he thought I was calling him back. He goes, yeah, Johnny, uh, yeah, uh, NBC wants me to do uh, these like timeout things, uh, kids programming, and uh, they want me to do it LA and New York. And I said, no, I won't do that. And, I only do it in Milwaukee, and well, we don't have a producer. I got a producer for you, so I'm the producer. So he says, he says, call this, this guy. Time? No, I didn't get paid. <laughs> so he says, he says, call this guy, David Levine. David Levine, call him, collect, Johnny. Call him, collect. They got a lot of money. I swear, I'm, this is honest to God truth. So I call this guy, and he says to me, "Well, I'm sure Al told you all about it." And I just started laughing. He goes. I said, how well do you know him? He goes, is he a piece, I'd never heard this expression, is he a piece of work or what? And I said, yeah. So we did th four, four time out, like 30, 60 second vignettes at Marquette High, Marquette High, and then I, Tom Closa was in charge of all the referees at the time. And that guy said, I'd love to do some on referees. So I called Tom up and we got, we went up to Dominican, Marquette High was playing Dominican and the guy, the producer from, you know, the, the top guy from NBC's there, he goes, God, those cheerleaders are good from Dominican, not Market High. He said, maybe we could do, I said, what? So I could talk to cheerleaders, and then they did something else. There were literally four, Incredible. four things. And so we're leaving the, the, the gym at, at Dominican, things over. They brought a crew up from the NBC station in Chicago, and these guys were just enamored with Coach McGuire. They had done the thing initially at Marquette High with the kids, uh, everything. And I'll never forget, 
this audio guy has got these expensive headphones on. He sees Al leaving, takes them off, throws them down. He said, I've worked with popes, I've worked with presidents. This is the best day of my career. And Al just looked and he goes, you know, I should have probably had you out to the house because we all work for the same station or same network, but once I leave in the morning, I'm in no great hurry to get home at night. Just <laughs> Pat understands. But it was amazing. We, so we were, we were at Marquette High, and Marquette High uniforms were just a circle with the ball. They were patterned after Marquette U, and there was nothing that said Marquette High. And I'm like, well, this is going to be national TV. So I call the guy, David Levine. I said, you know, instead of using the varsity, what's your demo? As if I knew what demographics were. He goes, well, like little kids. I said, well, wouldn't it be easier if you use like freshman players who they could relate to better? And he goes, that's a great idea. So I put the team in their in their uh, Fayed uniforms, which had Marquette <laughs> High School on the front. So everywhere we went, a stroke of genius. Well, it was just you know it was just what we did, and then I had. Got a picture with Al afterwards with all the players, and I had him. I went out to his house, and he personalized each one, and I gave each kid a five by seven, you know, like I think Heinen, Mark Heiner is one of the, you know, they'd put Mark, best wishes, Al McGuire, whatever, and, you know, seashells and balloons, whatever he'd, whatever he'd say. But that was him. It was, it was started at 11 o'clock. He walked in like at 11, at 10.59, he had on brown pants, a brown shirt and a brown sweater. No contrast whatsoever. And you can just see these guys going, oh God. I paid a guy at Dominican, Dominican High School. I paid, I got there at four o'clock in the afternoon. I paid a guy 20 bucks to hold a parking spot for him. And 20 bucks back in 1980 was a decent amount of money. And he looked at me and he goes, are you serious? I said, yeah, Al McGuire will be coming about quarter to seven. And lo and behold, he pulled up and there he was. And the guy, I'm sure, was like, well, he wasn't lying, you know, but he was, uh, but there's all that stuff. I mean, he just, the way he would work referees, uh, Tony Tortorella, we used to call him technical torts. Uh, his son was actually the registrar at Marquette. He was from um, um, Chicago. Another guy was um, the distributor for Budweiser in Chicago, um, and Al knew them all, and, and he'd, you know, he'd get the, he knew how to get timeouts called or uh, technical fouls called for the right reasons. And 74 was a tough one. He, I, I think they might have lost the tournament game because of that. But, uh, you, know, he, you know, he'd have his aircraft carriers and, you know, all that stuff. And Be yeah. You got questions. Oh, no. But before, uh, before there were TV timeouts, Al had the contact lens timeout. So when he didn't want to, he didn't want to use his, he'd point like this and somebody would, who didn't have contacts would be like, like this and the referees would stop. Who didn't, who didn't have contacts <laughs> right. is the key that, line. That's right. incredible. So he would, no. so they'd all be looking in the back, oh, here, yeah, yeah found it, put it, back, put it right back in there. And so he would save timeouts that way. But you're, you're talking about Alley. Um, I've seen, obviously I attended Market High, played on the basketball team, and I use that term loosely. I was a played sub, very well. I, I was a sub on that on played those teams. Very well. But I was watching. Uh, I've watched over the years all the players: Anthony Houston, Damon Key, Pat Foley, some of the great players through there. Jeff Jonas, Gary mm -hmm. Rosenberger. For my money, the best player who's ever played at Marquette High School was Ali McGuire. And the reason why I say that is he could play point guard or he could mm -hmm. play center. Mm -hmm. And I put that on our message board one time, and people were saying, are you serious, really? And then um, John Glazer came on, oh, our, yeah. and he yeah. posted, he said, he was my starting center on our championship mm -hmm. team when he was a freshman. Mm -hmm. wow. So talk, talk about Allie if you could. Oh, Allie was, he was, he was really, really good. Um, and a wonderful guy, sort of the antithesis of his dad in terms of he was, he was quiet and and you didn't think I knew big words like antithesis. You know? um, <laughs> I'm going to look it up. But just uh, really, really good guy. A lot of pressure, awful lot of pressure, you know, on him. Uh, but but played really hard. Very very well respected. Um, he played for the Knicks uh, mm -hmm. after he graduated, um, and you know, I had a great career in the in the finance world afterwards. But uh, just a wonderful guy. Um, you know, married a lovely woman, uh, Georgia, Georgia Callen, um, and 
great kids. His, his uh, daughter played at, on, at Virginia's team, women's team. Um, and just a great guy, a heck of a ball player. And well, we were playing. At, we were playing. Um, I'm thinking it was either Detroit or Loyola. I think it was Detroit. Ali steals the ball at the end of the game, and everybody thinks he's gonna, you know, go down and score. And then we give up the ball. So what do you get? You know, you got to run out the clock. And so Ali steals the ball, drives down, goes underneath the basket, comes out and sets up the play. And I, I was sitting next to coach, and Al looks up and he goes, "That's a McGuire." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. You know, he he uh, he could do it, and the players respected Allie. I mean, he was he was that was a tough spot. I mean, to was. you know to 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 have your dad be the coach and and, and John, if I may, and yeah. forgive me for interrupting, oh, but no. wasn't there the story where there was another player competing with Allie, and he said, "I'm as George, good as your son." George, and he George, 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 and George, what did he say about that? That was, was classic Al. It was George Frazier. He goes, "George, he's my son. He's my son. You got to be that much better, yeah. George." I never, I can still hear him say it, <laughs> George. You know, and and I love my son. Yeah, I love my son. You know, I mean, it was just <laughs> like, but and he wasn't afraid to say those things. You know, uh, so we Jimmy goes pro. It's uh, February 18th, um, Thursday. Um, Friday the 19th, we're at the arena for a practice and everybody's there, all the media's there. Earl was there from Channel 6 and everybody's there and it's tight as can be. And the, the rumor was that if Jimmy went out, that George would take his place, George Frazier would take his place. Mike Mills was the backup center, but George you know, was gonna take his place. So it's George and, George and Guy Lamb Who's guy was just one of the most, still is one of the most incredible people. Great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. They were roommates, and so it's like as tense as can be. And all of a sudden, guy goes, George, is there any truth to the rumor that you paid Jimmy his bonus? <laughs> and then everybody starts laughing, and, and the you know the tension went away, and we lost. I mean, we we lost our games when after Jimmy left, but uh, but Ali was. Boy, he was a heck of a ball player. Boy, thank you so much. It is so fun to take a look back. And John, talk about your website, a plethora of information when it comes to Golden Eagles basketball. Sure, the website's markethoops.com. We follow Marquette uh, recruiting, Shaka Smart and his staff uh, traveling uh, the United States and really uh, North America and the world. Uh, they've just gone to Australia to find a player. And uh, we'll also archive older shows at the site on the front page. If you want to be on our newsletter, you just put drop your email address in that little widget right there, and we will keep you abreast as to up breaking uh, breaking stories from Marquette basketball and future guests on our show. But we uh, this we've had 12 shows now, and we'll archive each one of those shows on the website. So if you have a Marquette friend or a family member who's outside the viewing area, please send them a link or send him or her a link to the. Uh, to this website and they can see all the old shows. Outstanding. All right, that is the MarquetteHoops.com basketball show on My24 for this Saturday. See you next Saturday morning at 1030 for John Dodds, producer Jason Ruck. I'm Tom Pippins. God bless everybody and go Golden Eagles.